What's going on, everybody? This your boy Sal in the building, man. And I am doing a show tonight. Even though, yes, the market was not open. But the least we can do is try to figure out what's going to be hot tomorrow. And, you know, here's the thing. The market should be 24-7, man. The market should already be 24-7. What's going on, Mikhail? Shout out to all the people slowly coming into the chat room and all the people going to be watching this in the future. Shout out to all of you as we try to figure out what is going to be hot on the markets this week. We really knocked it out of the park last week. We really knocked it out of the park last week. We had a lot of winners on this show last week. Hoping uh, we can continue the success going into this week. Another hurricane on the way. Yes, indeed, man. Well, shout out to everybody in the chat room. Otis Johnson. Uh, who else? Jeff Thayer. Donzel Essex. TGO213. Mr. Maniac. Spencer Gordon. Rohan Smith. Victor Pezos. What's going on, guys? Let's go ahead and get the show started with. Cut the music and let's go ahead and get the show started with. Shout out to Astrid. I think she'll be joining us later on. And all the people who are going to be watching this in the show. Today's episode. Today's September 4th, 2017. The months are really going by so fast. I remember, you guys, we had the New Year's episode. And all of a sudden, now it's September 4th. Jeez. I feel like we just had our New Year's episode not too long ago. Time waits for nobody. And uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go ahead and get started with what's going to be possibly hot this week. We had a nice little run in SDRL to end the Friday. Uh, that was an interesting move on Friday. You guys know I don't have a Friday show. So to see this stock up on Friday was really interesting to see that move. It was the second biggest on the market uh, on Friday. We definitely were all over APVO. Shout out to Africa Emporium for bringing that up. APVO. Just, just We were all over it. That was another one where... Uh, we were talking about it on Friday. It was up after hours. We knew that was going to be the play of the day for Friday. And we were all over it, man. We were all over it. But here's the thing. We talked about on Friday extensively that the money was going to be made in pre-market. And that was just exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. As you can see, If unless you, you got in pre-market, uh, you really didn't. You know, you, you really couldn't win here based on this chart. So, uh, you know, I like the fact that we got a lot of support here. We'll see what go, what happens going into tomorrow. It could very well sell off. But this is exactly why I hate the fact that we don't have a 24-7 market because you just have this shit happen. You know, where you just kind of have to figure out what could possibly happen uh, Monday. And shout out to all the people who've been really trying to get me into Bitcoin. Uh, you know, the more and more I read about it, the more it just makes sense. You know, I'll never have this show be all about Bitcoin. I'll always now be a, at least a part of our, our discussion. Uh, but it's just so much more of a fluid market uh, in comparison to the stock market. Now it's just, you know, it's going to become a real problem for the exchanges if they don't figure a way to make you know the stock exchanges 24 7 i honestly believe that i honestly believe that two years from now three years four or five years from now i don't think the market i don't think the world can accept a monday through friday market closed on the holidays market i, I just you know the more and more interconnected we become the more and more important trading and investing becomes more important now than it's ever been yes indeed what's going on mr jrh monk man absolutely absolutely a, a big new piece of the new uh order uh hickam hickamser absolutely you know so I, I implore anybody here with some kind of influence to 
with those people over there to really seriously think about changing some things. I love the fact that they moved to T plus two. That's a good thing. You know what I mean? That's a good thing now, T plus two. I think eventually we're going to move into a situation where the PDT rule goes away. Uh, that's, that's I think, the next step that they're, they're getting closer to that. But we've got to go 24-7, man. This This whole thing of waiting over the weekend, waiting for holidays, all that's just you know, allowing the markets to be manipulated by writers. And I mean, I watched the movie Wall Street this weekend. And listen, I'm looking for some tickers while I'm speaking here. I watched the movie Wall Street this weekend. If you remember Wall Street, one of the ways that Gordon Gecko pumped up his, his stocks or uh, would pump stocks is that he would contact somebody from one of the big newspapers. And he'll say something like, Blue Horseshoe loves whatever the, the stock is, if you guys remember. All right? And for that scene, it was Endicott Steel. So it'll be like, Blue Horseshoe loves Endicott Steel. And then the guy will take it and go run and make an article about it, and how great the stock is or how bad the stock is. That is still happening. That movie's almost 32 years old, 33 years old, and that shit still happens today. Where you have, you know, major investment banks and, and brokers and all that stuff that use media to manipulate stock prices. Why? Because we don't have a 24-7 market. All right, SN. All right, I'm looking for those plays we've been really falling in love with. What's going on, Africa Emporium? Shout out to Africa Emporium again for that APVO trade. Uh, we talked about that APVO and how all the money was really made in the weekend. I mean, excuse me, uh, pre-market, excuse me, pre-market. But as I started the show earlier, uh, we've got a, a hurricane, a Category 4 hurricane headed our way, ladies and gentlemen. Headed our way. The refiners, the super oil capitalists have used Harvey, the hurricane in Harvey, as a way to get oil prices back up. And we recently had a refiner out there in Houston all of a sudden say, hey, you know, yeah, all the flooding went away, but we want to. We think we want to stay closed for another two weeks. You can look it up. They said, "Oh, we're going to stay closed for another two weeks." Yeah, everything is dry and all that, but we're going to stay closed for another two weeks. They're really enjoying this now. I'm seeing oil at two sixty, two seventy, some places. I saw on Instagram it's already hit three at some places. NBCN here's the five minute chart based on Friday's move. Here's the five-minute chart based on... No, actually, sorry, excuse me. This is not Friday's move. Yeah, this is Friday's move. All right, Friday's move. Five-minute chart, NVCN. Look, it would have been a nice little short up there, but uh, I don't know about this one going into next week. NVCN uh, gives away a lot of gains when it gets them. So, yeah, now looking back on the chart, it does look like a, a great short opportunity. But you never know with these things. They can come back to surprise you. NVCN. RTNB. RTNB, we kind of gave up on RTNB after that hit at 385. Uh, you know, another stock that was a great short for a lot of people. Uh, but after it, it flunked that, I mean, everybody pretty much gave up on it. Friday was interesting to see RTMB, you know, become a dip buy for some people. Uh, I don't know what the story is there. I know we had a couple of people call up about it on Friday. I wasn't impressed with it. I don't know where this, the stock is going now. We know the catalyst was, you know, the fact that the stock was severely oversold when we first took a look at it. Beautiful run from below a dollar all the way to three bucks. I mean, the stock literally went over 130%. Over the course of a week. So it was a beautiful catalyst for when it was. Uh, but it looks like, you know, now I think you're just kind of really, really, really being uh, a, a risk taker there if you were to jump into RTNB right now. Okay. Uh, one play that I, I got 
definitely to watch for next week is uh, CHK. Uh, big fan of CHK. Uh, it is a, a, a volatile stock, especially when it's at these under uh, oversold levels. You can go back to its March, and you can go back to some other days before that. Uh, you can see when this stock gets oversold, it's a nice play to ride back up to the middle of the RSI. Uh, we've got an opportunity right now with uh, CHK. We had a brother call up on CHK on Thursday. On Thursday, so Friday was actually a really nice entry. If you're already in the stock, I would suggest you definitely stay in. Uh, let me see where the Keltner charts are at on this. 395. Yeah, possibly on 395. Could could we could probably touch that 395 uh, right about there. So this, this is definitely a possibility on CHK. But I I like CHK a lot. Yeah, I think you got a real nice strong catalyst being at the hurricane. Unfortunately, I hate the fact that we're making money on these tragedies. But that's you know it is what it is. Uh, you know when it comes to making money. BW. Uh, I mean, what can I say? I mean, this is one of those things where uh, I told you guys to get in it. We all looked at BW. Beautiful opportunity. I'm sticking around. My exit is 294, which I still have labeled there 294 as my exit. And I'm just going to take it and run with it. It could, it could very well go higher than that, but that was where I set it at. Uh, that, that's my goal, which was at 294 uh, from that 214 entry. So. Uh, nice, nice play on on BW again. Just, just another play that was, you know, severely oversold, and uh, we talked about it here on the show. That's why we have the show is to find these opportunities that can get us some green uh, over a short period of time. What's going on, relative? MH with your ticker MH. Uh, M. Oh, okay, MHLD. I'm like, I didn't see anything pull up there on MH. Uh, MHLD, ooh, nice one here, showing a lot of support. Uh, so, uh, seeing a decline in volume, which is pretty, uh, and that that's only because we saw that that gap down here, where a lot of people relinquished their positions. Uh, but then, wow, this is a really ugly looking chart. Property casualty and reinsurance. So it looks like it's an insurance company. Uh, obviously, man, they must be, you know, typically insurance companies are, are very, very cash heavy, right? Cash heavy. Uh, so, you know, they, they don't trade this cheap. There's something fundamentally wrong with this business. It, it must be a very, very small insurance company. I see here they only have over two, just over 200 employees, and uh, they, you know, that's almost uh, half over half a million, half a billion dollar market cap. So, yeah, but don't know much more about. But you're right. I mean, it's, it is oversold. It is truly oversold. And these gap downs can can make you some good money. Uh, I, I try to look more into this and find out. One, I see here possibly had to do with earnings, uh, which is why the stock gap down. But. I mean, what where where is this company located where is their uh risk and and all that stuff you know all that kind of stuff what's going on astrid say aaron b told you the show was back on yeah the show's been back on astrid we've been back on i made a video on my uh other channel i thought you know, we st I know we still got a lot of people. I still, and you're not the only one. I still got a lot of people who think uh, I, I'm I'm just waiting until October. Where honestly, I'm just gonna be here, and then when I I get off that PDT violation over there on my other channel, I'll be back over there. Uh, e X X I. This one's a little bit high though. Seven thirty is not too bad. EXXI, not the cheapest stock in the world, but I know ah, the volume isn't really there either. Uh, again, not the cheapest stock in the world, but you know it is a golf, co golf Coast energy play. Some of you guys might like it. I wish the volume was better, though. 
Wild Horse, Pioneer. Yeah, and then some of these gas companies are just aren't they're just not cheap at all. Let's take a look at NAK. See somebody bringing up NAK. NAK heating up. Still has it still hasn't hit that that mark where we said that would be a really interesting to take a look at, which is that 181. We actually closed at 181. The stock hit 184 on Friday, couldn't stay above it. As you can see, 181 has been a huge problem for that stock in the past. Not sure why. Not sure why, but, you know, trying to do its thing now. 704, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, it's Astrid. Hey, Astrid, what's going on? Oh it's been a while. I know. I thought you were still in violation. Yeah, yeah. This uh, The other channel still is until I think October the 15th or so. So I started oh, this okay. new channel, and that's where I've been streaming for them uh, since. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice to be it's nice to be back. I am um, I'm still trading. However, I've been dealing with some personal stuff, so I haven't been in as many uh, tickers as I was before. Mm -hmm. And I did made some silly mistakes, you know, here and there. And the biggest one was um, do not buy. Do not trade when you don't have settled funds. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that the hard way. Um, but anywho, I'm in AZFL. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have been in that since triple five. And oh, I'm wow. Riding. Yeah. So this is, this is the one. Remember we talked about, we talked about one day yes. I would, would get in, you know, at a good entry point and would uh, I believe this is this is going to run. There's a lot of great things happening with it. I've already taken some profits. I've learned that um, with this journey I've been on. So now I'm just letting you know, letting it ride and and watching it very closely. So that that's the only big one that I'm that I'm in right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the trade here, and we talked about this last week. I mean, this is basically. You getting in at that triple zero five, there was little to no downside, you know, for you getting into that at that level. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely, you're enjoying a lot of profit right now. So I'm not surprised yeah. you're taking some off the table. And yeah. who, who knows yeah. how high this can run? Because I know it's ran hard in the past. So we'll see what happens here. Right, and that's the thing. I got in because I had I got in before. And it it didn't run like how it's running now. I think I made it, might have gotten at like triple four maybe or triple five and it don't it ran to triple triple nine or a ten and then i i got out or maybe i got out too soon because i was still looking to just you know take my profits and, and go and then it, it went down again and i said oh okay let me i threw like a million shares at it and i said oh, okay let me just get in and leave it alone and you know there was a while i wasn't even looking at my portfolio i wasn't really looking at anything and then one day I look and it's at triple eight, and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I better start really paying attention now. Yeah. So yeah. this does have some potential to a lot of potential to run, and it has some good things, you know, happening with the um, with the hemp, with the acres, you know, their um. I feel like I'm on Game of Thrones with winter is coming. It's like the harvest is coming, <laughs> um, and that should be happening pretty soon. So. I'm happy. Yes, indeed. Astrid, again, thank you so much for the call, dear. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's nice to be back. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron told me that it was back on, and I was like, oh, I had no idea. So I'm glad she told me. Yes, indeed. But um, all right, I'll be tuning in when I can. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, bye. So shout out to Astrid. Thank you so much for calling, dear. Uh, Astrid, uh, long time watcher. And I know, again, a lot of people haven't, you know, they're not, they're not sure that we're back on. Uh, but it is what it is. We got to keep going with this show. So it's glad to have Astrid back and calling up the show. And look, I'm very well aware that sometimes this penny stock game, this trading thing can really frustrate you sometimes. It can really frustrate you to a point where, you know, some people just like, Ugh, you know, they just had enough. Uh, but, you know, the love of it, the, uh, the, the opportunity always drags you back, always drags you back. And it's good to see Astrid uh, uh, making uh, some good money here on AZFL. I think the only thing about when you have a winner like this is always wishing you had went in bigger. But that's that's with any gain you have. All right, so let me go back and catch up with you guys here on these tickers. Uh, we took the NAK, EXXI, bankruptcy, yeah, yeah. 
DNR, yeah, DNR is my my pick for this week as well. DNR is my pick for this week. I'm already all over DNR. Uh, I like 127. I said 168 is a possibility, but I know 127 is a possibility. I think we can get 127 by the end of the week. I think that's my BW for this week is DNR. All right. I think DNR can bounce off that. Looking for that 127 on that play. Uh, Africa Emporium, AMFE. Let's take a look at your AMFE. All right, no real gains on Friday. I, I, here's the thing about this one, man. I think this was just, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those ones that I, I just don't know where it's going right now. I mean, you know, it could very well just continue to sell off. Uh or yes, it could go higher too, but I, I just don't know where it's at. I don't know where it's at. I don't know what it's trying to do. Uh, beautiful move there in July. Uh, beautiful move there in July. Then you know, obviously people started taking profits on it, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, in AMFE. Rob Drag, he said AZFL, do I think it's any good? I mean, it, it's been a runner. It's been a runner. It could do some things, but we'll see. You know, that's that's the thing about investing, man. You know, you, you can't predict this stuff. All you can do is, you know, look at technicals and see what it could possibly do. And when we look at AZFL, looking for a possible breakout higher, uh, already, you know, pretty hot on the RSI. But again, you know, had a couple of days where it sold off and now you had two days in a row uh, of minor but, you know, strong gains. And now looking for a possible breakout next week. CCTL. That's that coin, coin tail, right? Yeah. Triple zero four. You know, again, we've talked about uh, CCTL lottery ticket, man. Patrick, you're going to have to hold your gains and see what happens. MSDI waiting for a spike. Let's take a look at where you're at. MSDI. Uh, don't like where the where 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 it's at on the chart on MSDI. It looks like you still got a lot of downside risk to go there on MSDI here on the daily chart anyway. Let me know what you're seeing in Maurice Jones because I'm I'm not seeing anything right now on the daily chart. Uh, still got a lot of downside risks there. Ears. Ears is a stock we took a look at last week. Uh, again, another situation where, you know, stock was oversold. Uh, that was the play we looked at on Wednesday. Thursday, it didn't do anything. So that's kind of why a lot of guys were like, mm -hmm. but hey, if you stu stood around, uh, it was a nice move there on Friday on Ears. The volume came and found you. And that's kind of why sometimes when we pull up these stocks that are oversold, you know, many times, you know, you don't see the volume that you need, especially if they, they weren't a stock that like gap down, but just kind of, you know, just, just naturally sold off very aggressively, right? And it wasn't a stock that gap down. You, you, you'll you see something like this where the volume is very, very light. For example, on ears, you see the average volume is only 320,000 shares. So when this goes oversold, you're looking at it like, well, well, it's a low volume. It's it's not doing much. But here's the thing, though. The catalyst for a run brings other traders to want to play. So sometimes, yes, if you if you give me a ticker and it's, you know, on 20 or 10 on the RSI and it only averages 100,000 shares uh, daily, that still is an opportunity to make money because, again, you know, the catalyst alone could bring in a million shares, could bring in buyers who want a piece of it. What's going on, Stock God? GTE, let's take a look at it. And again, uh, market was closed today, so we're just kind of looking at what could possibly be running this week. What could possibly be running this week? Uh, I don't think we have any 
real macro news coming out this week from our government. Right? I don't think we don't we don't have any housing numbers or anything like that coming out this week. Last I checked investing.com. Yeah, I don't I didn't see anything coming out this week that was overly important. Uh we got the government shutdown looming not this week but next week. So we got the whole government shutdown possibility for it next week. So I don't know, uh, again, with the hurricane coming, government shutdown. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of things to, to really be aware of over the next 14 days. And it's going to be critical for you to be able to find opportunities to play, you know, off these, these macro and micro situations. Because there's going to be a lot of money to be made here. I'm seeing gold and silver higher, crude higher. All right. Futures are down right now. So it looks like the SE, the Qs might pull back tomorrow. Let's look at, look at your tickers again. DMTX. DMTX. All right. Looks like you had to gap up on what, what was the news there? causing the gap up I don't remember we don't remember us talking about DMTX uh, nice move there though looks like uh, has been a stock that's been holding and doing well but again volume kind of drying up here over the last couple days volume is drying up All right, so volume drying up after that gap up opening a couple days ago TITN Titan Machinery. Titan Machinery. Agricultural Machinery Capital Goods Company. Don't know anything about them. Yeah, don't know anything about Titan Machinery, fam. Uh twelve dollar was a four was a seventeen dollar stock and now it's a twelve dollar stock, losing almost four dollars. A value over two days still not the cheapest not not something I would particularly play because again you guys know trading is about scale I want to get as much sh as many shares as I can for as cheap as I can all right just like a business and in fact if you read the book trading as a business you talk about that you know trying to buy shares wholesale sell them retail that's basically what we're trying to do here the same thing. All right. W I N. Windstream Holdings. Yep. Windstream Holdings is one we looked at last week. I see here we looked at it on Tuesday as well as Monday. Tuesday as well as Monday. And at Tuesday we were exactly at $2 in the stock, up 16 cents now. We propose that, or I propose that the uh, exit should be 231. Looks like you're headed on that direction. 231 looks like a possibility. Integrated to telecommunications company. Still looks like you got a lot of reasons to to hold uh, those gains there. 231 is a possibility. Two thirty one is a possibility. Uh GTE Grantiera Energy. I don't remember did I pull it up? If I did pull it up, I didn't take a good look at it. GTE last couple days looked really nice. Oil and gas exploration. Uh this sector is is, is hot right now. I mean, again, uh, you guys know what's been going on and causing these plays to move. Uh I think, you know, your entry was probably Wednesday or Tuesday which was the height of the Harvey situation and I would even you know go as far as to say even though things have gotten better things have gotten better in Houston with what we got going on coming to Florida here by you know this time next week we could be talking about a Miami that looks like you know a nuclear bomb hit by the way some people are on CNN are talking Category four, possibility of a category five. Uh, we know that, the, you know, there's a significant amount of oil assets in the Gulf. 
So this could be another opportunity for you to, to you know, make more money in addition to what you already uh, made uh, during this Harvey situation. Oh, TIC. Let's take a look at it. Damn, shit, what happened to that? Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with OTIC. I remember, okay, I do see it here. Uh, there was a drug failure. All right, it was a drug failure. I see we talked about this on Tuesday. Drug failure on OTIC. Drug failure on OTIC. Let me see who else is. I'm getting all these texts. But yeah, OTIC drug failure and by the way it was this flagship product is the reason why it got like that so already got a really nice list already we've talked about for this coming week bw chk heavy energy heavy energy uh sn let me just take a look at that sn real quick yeah, SN is another one. SN trades 1.8 million a day, so actually not too bad on SN. Sanchez Energy Corp. C drill too, C drill, but C drill looks a little bit. You know, C drill could run. No, let me not. Let me not get it confused. C drill it looks very much like DCTH uh, from a week or two ago, where you have this kind of cheap, dirt cheap. Nasdaq play that brings in stupid volume for God knows what reasons. Uh, C drill looks very much like like DCTH not too long ago. Uh, there's a real cheap stock that I'm seeing people on stock Twitch talk about these last couple of days. Uh, Pack D. Uh, Pack D is a very very dangerous play, and I would really stay far away from from pack d but here's the thing man i think this week though while you still have the opportunity to trade it it might make sense to get in here's why if you read the news pack d there's several reasons pack d could get could get delisted very well is likely to get delisted by either the 13th or the 15th the stock trades uh below 15 million dollar market cap now you it requires that a company have at least a $15 million market cap and trade at a dollar a share to stay listed on the New York Stock Exchange. PACD is below those standards. So either PACD has got to you know, figure out a way to get to at least $0.70 cents a share or $1 or both by the 15th. By the 15th. Because they need to get above fifteen million dollar market cap. They can do that if they if they double up. If they can get to eighty cents, that's eighteen million. That's that's eighteen million, and you know now it's about getting to a dollar. So this this is it's a huge risk, but you might have a reason to get into Pack B for this week and this week only. Just put it out there. It might be what stock you might want to watch. Just putting it out there. Uh, Genesis Healthcare. Genesis Healthcare, a stock I really loved this summer. I was a big fan of Genesis Healthcare. Some of you guys may remember if you've been watching the show long enough. Uh, stock got oversold there. Nice move here, higher on Genesis Healthcare. Again, another stock that wasn't uh, didn't have much volume, but again, you know, the catalyst is a catalyst, a reason to buy. Uh, is uh, one to take advantage of, and the reason was an oversold uh, stock, and Genesis moved accordingly. Okay. Let's see here. Looking for another great play, Goodrich Petroleum. Not not the cheapest in the world. Although Genesis Healthcare, I think you might you might have one more day, or could sell off there on that one too. Be careful. Uh, GDP, let me see here, GDP Goodrich Petroleum, 
Goodrich Petroleum. Again, not the cheapest stock in the world. Very low volume. But I just got done talking to you guys about why it could continue. Jose. J-O-S-E. I'm not seeing anything on there. Z-San. Let's look at that. Z-San. Zazano Pharma Corp. Z-San. Don't see this as one we talked about. Damn, looks like the real nice move was that 21st. That day on the 21st, right? That would have been a real nice move at 80 cents. Would have been up 13 cents from now. Decent volume intraday, by the way, too. Uh, nice move on Z-San. Uh, I think now, just to jump in, you're just patting somebody's gains now. Uh, I, I do see here there's some, some articles here on some kind of patent they got going on. So look deeper into that to justify... Uh, a possible another, you know, run a green on Z sand, but I think you'd be just padding somebody's gains now if you jump in. Mankind. Mankind was uh, one that we all kind of regretted here, uh, not taking advantage of, because every day we talked about this possibly starting to give up. You know, it continued to add on. You never really knew what the high was going to be, but we found out the high uh, was Thursday. And as you can see, Friday, the stock sold off. Uh, got to as low as 185 before settling at 187. And you didn't have too many people buy those bottoms in, in mankind. So we'll see what happens, uh, MNKD, going into this week. Uh, we, we've already seen a couple stocks that look very similar to this, AMFE and other ones. That ended up being dip buy situation. So stocks sold off after a very aggressive move higher. You could get an opportunity for a dip, uh, a buy opportunity, which very well could happen as soon as tomorrow on MNKD. Huge volume, 7 million shares traded on Friday. Before that, 5 million I'm seeing here too. So definitely an in-demand play. Uh, UNNG, United States Natural Gas. Man, this is one that's been really, really, really beat up. Really, really, really beat up. I got some 2019 calls at that yellow line. That's how, you know, bad I would love to see it go higher because I think natural gas is going to be the thing of the future. Uh, but, you know, as of where it is right now, we'll see. It's still really, really beat up here uh, since May of this year. T-Con, let's look at T-Con. T-Con, Tracton Pharmaceuticals. Nice move there. We saw this on Tuesday, on Wednesday. Uh, hesitation on Thursday with the doji, long-legged doji. But look at that Friday move up 26% on uh, half a million shares, which is almost five times what it usually trades on T-Con. Uh, again, I don't. I see something about to present at the Wells Fargo Healthcare Conference, but that was back August 31st. TCon. Yeah, yeah. MNK Day definitely jumping. Rig. Let's take a look at Rig. Rig oil and gas play. I kind of forgot about rig. Every time I think of rig, I think about O rig, but rig is a ticker and yeah, very volatile as well. Again, this is an opportunity where ugh, missed out on that one here. Uh, nice move here. Going back to August 22nd at the low 740s. You're up now a dollar and 10 cents a share since uh, late August in Transocean. Yeah, we played gold, and you've been a winner in gold ever since we started talking about it. Uh, you've been a really, really good winner in gold. AUI, uh, you know, I, there's, there's, it's, 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 a, it's a good one. I think there's some other better ones out there, but uh, AUI, not bad, not bad. I think the one we really loved is uh, BAA, 
We really love the BAA last week here on the show. Enjoyed that move higher. If you guys remember, we set that 46 cent mark for you to get your, your profits. And sure enough, it just followed through. Beautiful follow through on BAA. And we talked about how, you know, it doesn't get any better in this when you see this. Again, stock barely had any volume going into the oversold situation. But the catalyst was more than enough to see that go higher up almost 15 cents over the course of two days. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, O-Rig is the one I think about a lot. Shout out to Africa Emporium bringing up O-Rig. O-Rig is the one I, th I think about a lot. Think about a lot on O-Rig. All right, that one too could possibly move, but again, the low volume on O-Rig. Just be careful on that one. GSS. Oh. And looking at the primary trend again, another bearish, ugly uh, gold stock. You guys know for the most of the year, gold has very been a very much underperforming asset, getting killed by crypto and many other uh, better investments out there right now. So GSS obviously though been benefiting for the last uh, week, week and a half, but it looks like the market is going to start running hot again. Although I do see here. Uh, we talked about earlier that the futures right now are down after hours. So it looks like we're going to have a pretty rough start to the queues as well as the SPY tomorrow morning. If these future prices hold, if these future prices hold, we'll see. WLL oil play. Winting or Whiting Petroleum Corp. Look at that volume. Very impressive volume. 12 million shares traded of this every day. Billion dollar market cap. This is definitely a company bigger than what I thought it would was. Uh, closes sale of Fort Berthold area assets for 500 million on September 1st. So it looks like on Friday they closed a 500 million dollar asset deal if that's going to the bottom line that's very impressive i'd work that higher 458 is where you close that i'm putting that on my watch list right now on wll again a slow gainer but very stable as you can see they're very stable looking chart no real surprises there Uh, NGTF, somebody bringing up Night Food. Night Food, eh, not impressed with it. IPWR. IPWR, Ideal Power. Uh, don't like the entry if you're considering it as, a, as an entry. I don't like where you where you are right now. Again, unless you got some news. All right, because so when we pull up these charts, I'm just looking at where it's at on the chart. I don't, I don't have any background on it or anything like that. So, if you know something is coming up, uh, that that you know justifies you getting in, regardless of the fact that the RSI is at 65 or already at 70. Let me know, because I'll pull up a chart and already see it at the middle of the RSI. No real movement, you know, primary trend that's not really going anywhere. I'm looking at it, I'm saying, okay, that's 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 a no-go. NVCN up 44% on Friday's move. It was the number one uh, stock on the exchange, if I correct. No, number three, excuse me. Slight, slightly after SDRL, number three on the exchange. Yeah, Friday was actually a really good day for trading really good day for trading but i was all over bw rtnb was a big surprise yeah gold is up gold is up 10 absolutely gold is up man actually yeah gold is up 10 hit 11 i see it just bounced off 11 back to 1094 gold up yes indeed 
you know then we got the korea situation and all that stuff we got a lot of things going on fam we got a lot of things going on right now hc boxing what do i have my eye on i mean we just spent the whole show talking about that uh bw continue to you know enjoy games from bw uh we're gonna have africa emporium on in just a second africa emporium that's you yeah, what's going on, brother Sal? What's hey. going on, family? Yes, indeed. What's up with you, man? Nothing much, man. Just trying to get ready for tomorrow, man. I'm yep. sure everybody else is kind of antsy and, you know, hate these long weekends. You know, we used to look forward to three or four day holidays, and now it's like, man, want the market open up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I, that's that's the thing is once you start getting into this trading thing and you actually start making some returns, you hate the weekends to, ex to an extent. So... Right, uh, Mondays become like it can't come fast now. You right, can hate Monday, right, like hate Monday. <laughs> right, right. So what what are you taking a look at though? I have a few. Uh, I was like, so you know, we're, we're playing this market, you know, from a daily perspective. It's, it's hard to kind of plan two or three days out unless you got some good screen plays because there's just too much volatility going on on the political in the world political arena right now. Mm -hmm. On top of the storm, you know. So we know all is at that cusp right now. It's at this crossroads where they're either going to get right or it's going to get wrong. You know, they've been kind of pricing oil in to kind of make this, you know, I guess lower downtrend anyway because, you know, it was just the way things were happening with the Saudi Arabia scenario and OPEC. So now with the hurricane and they have to close a lot of these refineries uh, in, in the U.S., Texas per se, I mean, that's, that's, that's going to do some wonders for the oil market. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, these outside competitors are going to eat like some, uh, like some vultures a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, price of gas already jumped up like 20, 30 cents, literally all night. Imagine that like a stock. Man, this you is... Know, so, yeah, and that's another thing we got to worry about. So on top of that, you know, obviously, you know, the financial markets are kind of ugly because it, as everyone do know that has been trading for a while, the month of September is kind of like, it's a gauntlet. It's kind of like how we d went through April yeah. and, and a lot of, you know, fake outs and breakouts were happening, you know, fake outs instead of breakouts were happening. So you got to be very cautious with that. Uh, so overall, you know, I, I'm just kind of looking at, um, you know, some of these continuations from Friday because really that's all we really have to go off right now. I don't see any really definitive news that I've, I've missed. Like, uh, you know, we know HTGM jumped up and ran. I don't know if you caught that one as well, Sal. That jumped up and ran Friday. Yeah. Uh, we know that's a micro float on that joker. Uh, so I'm looking for to see if that's going to have any continuation. It might just do it out. Uh, RTNB actually had news. That's what caused it to run. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I, I, I was you, wondering yeah. why that, that had moved like that because, I mean, we saw the first reason was the fact that it was oversold. So to see that go again, that was interesting. They actually had it. Uh, they got an extension. So they got an extension on their on their foreclosure or the auction sale from the 31st of August that was uh, positioned to be. Mm -hmm. They got it postponed for 30 days which obviously gives them the opportunity to find a suitor or a buyer to buy them out, which is, is very favorable that it's going to get bought out. Because of the, you know, the, the sanctions that it's in, cybersecurity is very important. It's a Trump stock. You know, it's actually one of the top tier uh, cybersecurity stocks out there that's actually trade at such a low valuation. Mm. All its competitors are trading at, you know, 15 billion, 10 billion market valuation. So this is a company that's well endowed going to get ate up and bought out. I have no doubt in my mind someone's going to pick this company up because of the fact that what they do uh, in, in a so-called uh, so war, you know, environment that we're dealing with right now. So keep that in mind, guys. Just one to kind of just, once again, keep your eye on. Uh, also, I don't know if you noticed this too, but, you know, the North Korea, I think, tested another uh, a dummy hydrogen bomb yeah, recently. That's yeah. they're, not crazy too. They're, they're not playing games, yeah. man. These people are, are ready, man. They're ready for us. Yes. And that's another reason why the financial markets are going to be crazy tomorrow. Because anytime North Korea does something like that, the financials are don't, going, going to definitely suffer. And that's why gold is up and running right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, so keep that in mind, guys. If you're trying to play any of those kind of, you know, uh, cues tomorrow, you know, any of these volatility plays, make sure you find the right ones, you know. So just be harsh with that. And also, uh, let's talk about a little bit about the, uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, did you get the news about China? Uh, yeah, I saw China had canceled something about IOCs or what I, I, I mean, I'm sure you can talk about it a little bit better. Yeah, the ICO. So they, 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 they're shutting down or trying to ban the ICOs, which obviously, you know, China or Asia as a whole, they're really the, the gatekeeper to the cryptocurrencies, you know, being the guy that, you know, invented cryptocurrency coming from that Asian market. And they've been very well at trying to 
establish a certain digital currency to combat that or, or to rival the central bank. Mm. And we know the you know the 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 just the, the span of watching these cryptocurrencies just go from literally zero to like thousands of dollars overnight is just like it's just mind blowing. Yeah. And it's like how long are we gonna keep sitting away the sideline saying, Well let me wait. Let me wait. Let me see what it's gonna do and it and it just keep going up. It keep going up. Yeah. So the weird thing about it, it had this correction today because of that news out of China. And it, you know, Bitcoin went from I was up actually watching to see if Bitcoin was gonna try to go and push and hit that five thousand mark. And, you know, it, it got up about forty five hundred and went up a little more. And I was like, okay, we might have some correction coming, you know, after the holiday, you know, yeah. Tuesday might, you know, whatever. And then the news came out with China, then it dumped, yeah. you know, came all the way down to about 4,100. Uh, Litecoin came down from 93 to down to like 63, 65, which offered, offered a good entry point for people to want to get in. Yeah. I actually bought a little bit more at that price. And, uh, you know, Ethereum offered it suffered. It went from 395 down to like 294, 293, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. So, but like you were saying earlier, uh, why not understand that you can still trade the market when you know the uh, you know the U.S. markets are down? You can still trade Bitcoin and Litecoin. Now, on the that's, other man, that's what you makes it make so money. beautiful. That's what makes this <laughs> this market so beautiful, and that's why I honestly, the more and more research I do, they're going to end up winning out and beating you know the stock market. They're going to the gov- these governments are going to have to do something, man, because you know these. They, they, it's just too it's too smart man it's just way too smart right. it, it goes around it's the, the old central thing banks that goes. it's just it's just way mm-hmm. too smart they got to do something they fiat currency is just not going to be the way to go anymore it's just not you know what it is it's the old thing how it goes if you can't beat them join it they've been trying to beat them for long they they denied the etf then they allowed you know one of them to get in you know and and, and then it's like how are we going to regulate it now the RRS, the RRS is trying to attack them on the tax side. They mm-hmm. keep kind of, you know, third, uh, uh, you know, uh, a monkey wrench in the plan. But here it is. A lot of these big American investors are starting to get on board now because they have no choice. They've been part of into the opportunity where they got to get in. You know, Mark Cuban has been very staunch about saying he would never invest in Bitcoin ever. Now he's making big money investments in the Bitcoin yeah, now. Yeah, I he's trying that. to get a part of that, uh, that ETF fund. That uh, that New York is trying to put together some, some you know some investors up there trying to put together a new ETF uh, on the, on the, uh, a new they actually trying to invent their own coin digital currency and he's trying to be a part of that now because you know it, it is literally where we're going mm. you're going to have that diversity now in the market in the world market but they're not going to be settling on this old fake dollar anymore so I'm just saying guys if you, if you do or you don't take a look at this stuff man you can trade it I mean I've been watching my money go up. You know, I get a little pull back today. I'm like, man, you know, this is cool. I can, I mean, I can still trade the market during holidays. I can still trade the market on a Sunday. I can trade it on a Saturday. Yeah. I can scalp a, you know, a good plate like a, a good Litecoin or a Neo or, or a Ripple, all these different other currencies out there. You can make good money on the weekend, mm-hmm. you know, and, and be ready for Monday to play these NASDAQ, OTC, the NYC, and, and the rest of them. So just something to think about, guys. So, but. Yeah, you know, I'm constantly doing my due diligence. I'm learning too. Uh, you know, we got guys like Bobos is very, in, you know, smart about this stuff. Kelly Rob and Chill and the rest of you guys are very, very, you know, uh, smart when it comes to the, uh, the cryptocurrency. Just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, you know, look for all the ways to make money, man. Don't don't get stuck in this one one backing. <laughs> there it is, African Poem. Thank you so much for the call, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Sal. Keep it up, guys. Yes, indeed, man. Shout out to Africa Emporium for the call. Thank you for the call, as always. Thank you for the call, as always. And, guys, I mean, that's all we're, I'm trying to do is just get you guys uh, warmed up for the week. Uh, it's a short trading week, so a lot of things are going to happen. You're going to see a lot of stocks run. Uh, a lot of people sitting on, you know, their 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 computers right now looking to see what can they trade tomorrow you got a lot of people get antsy on these short weeks and make a lot of big moves really early so you're going to see a lot of stocks move in the morning uh i see jeff bringing up usnzy don't know anything about this play it looks like a foreign stock here uh that's been running here uh, interesting buying that's been happening here. I don't know again what the volume is. I'm not seeing the volume numbers on this. Uh, so figure out what's going on there. Let me know. I, I have no idea. Steel play, as he says, it's a steel play. So look it up. Looks like a foreign company. GBTC. 
Yeah, if you guys remember, we talked about it on Thursday. Uh, Citron Research came out and basically shitted on the company. And the guy actually went on CNBC. And that's why when I talk about how the system is rigged, you know, when somebody can come out and just say, hey, this stock is a piece of shit. And not only that, but these companies actually, like CNBC, put these people on. I mean, this is a guy with a blog. I mean, besides that, uh, he's really a nobody. But he's got a blog and he gets, you know, able to put on CNBC and then he'll just say, yeah, this stock is, is garbage, is shit. And then the stock just sells off. And he's blatantly short the stock. You know, I don't know how because I can, you know, you can't get any borrows. Uh, but no doubt a man of his wealth probably has uh, connections to the banks and, you know, they, they, will, they will find issues for him. So, um uh, it is what it is. Citron Research, go find them on Twitter. They also have a great website. You also have a, a many different competitors. One guy uh, who owns uh, thestreetsweeper.com. That's another very similar website where they basically just try to shit on companies and uh, take short positions. A lot of these short bias uh, websites and blogs out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, the more and more I'm learning. I mean, maybe not 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 necessarily on the the penny stock side of the things, but you know, many of these large cap stocks, uh, many of them, I would I would say, you know, if the market traded twenty four seven and wasn't as reg heavily regulated as they as it is, they probably wouldn't be trading for the valuations that they are now. You know, it, it's it's like they're getting saved by that 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 930 to 4 you know what I mean they're just getting saved by the 930 to 4 and the Wall Street Journal and company you know and Forbes and Market Watch and all that crap and the traditional way that they they teach trading education in America CLNE clean energy fuels Clean energy fuels. Looks like we missed the move there on clean energy fuels. Looks like the buy-in was what 215. You're at 244 now. Looks like we missed the move here. You'd be patting somebody's gains, looking for a red day uh, in clean energy fuels. Uh, looks like short interest is getting higher and higher on, in clean energy fuels. Be very careful on that. Increasing short interest in clean energy fuels appreciate that Matt Cantu yeah hit that like button if you can hit that like button if you can this is going to be my second time bringing up this ticker on TITN uh, somebody said that they're going to be buying into that I, I would let a day one more day go and see what happens man I mean you know uh, see what happens because it's very much falls in line with uh, a stock we looked at last week which was Best Buy. If you remember Best Buy, we thought Best Buy, you know, the very next day after that had crashed lower that, you know, it was going to be a run to it, but as you can see, uh, you know, you still had some selling to go in Best Buy. Interesting little doji candlestick with with uh Friday's move. So Best Buy may be going higher now as uh, the sellers are long, hopefully all out now. And all you have are people who are now interested in buying and taking the stock back up to $56, $57. So I think you got about 3 to $4 worth of, of, of value uh, you can get out of Best Buy. If you're a little bit patient on it, it's probably not going to happen this week. But I think in two weeks, you can find yourself back at 57 You know, retail's been beat up, but again... Uh, we know that this was a situation where Africa Emporium had called, again, always with great info, letting us know that, you know, that was basically a publicity issue. Where, you know, like all businesses, you have frontline staff who are, you know, a lot of times ignorant and, you know, just do things to do things and got caught doing some stupid shit. All right. So Best Buy. Best Buy, one to watch. One to watch. I like Best Buy. The $57 would be what I would be looking for uh, if I were to ride Best Buy. I'd be looking at $57. $57.
And I think you can get there in about a week, week and a half. Maybe sooner. But yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be patient on that one. All right, not the cheapest stock in the world. Give it time. These ones don't technically move two dollars at a day, you know. So let's go up low key. You said you got some calls on Best Buy, okay? Yeah, yeah. They they had messed that up. They had messed that up. All right. Let's look at TXTM. TXTM. Okay, no, the other TXTM. OTC TXTM Protex Mobility. Triple Zero Play. Triple Zero Seven right now. Like all the triples, they're all lottery tickets. You know, they're all lottery tickets. AZFL got its you know number called this week. So we'll see what happens in TXTM. Can it do it again? It's done it in the past. We'll see. All right. BIOS. Bioscript. I've watched this stock before. I've watched this stock before. I haven't done it lately. Look at that. It had an amazing April into June. Look at that. Beautiful, amazing April into June. It's a slow, nice climber into the summer. Uh, working its way higher now. Looking like a real company. You know, looking like it's trying to trade like a real company. All right, Bioscript. Don't know much about what they do. They're listed as a primary care services provider. So learn a little bit more about what they do here. Three hundred and almost four hundred million dollar market cap. Looking at the chart though, it actually looks. I mean, you're getting higher lows. So going in the right direction on BioScript, and those dips have looked like you know opportunities to buy, as you can see. As hindsight is always twenty twenty. BioScript looking good. All right, shop, Shopify, Shopify, not the cheapest stock in the world, but definitely a uh, Shopify. I mean, these guys are making a lot of money on those Shopify little, uh, you know, stores, man. You guys, these guys who are selling a lot of mugs and shirts and just like little crap like that on social media. And they're making decent money, and Shopify is making some decent money on their platform, enabling you to use social media to sell things online. So Shopify caking it up, man. Ten billion dollar market cap, I think, is a little bit too much. I, I think if you look at the numbers, it's nowhere near justifiable. But at the end of the day, you know they're they're hot right now. So you know, we, but we've seen many of these stocks, you know, start off well loved. And we all know how they end up. Uh, in fact, if we look at the weekly chart, you see Shopify just started trading June of last year. So this is a relatively new company. All right. Opened up at $25. Now trades at $110 in a year and a half from 25 to 110. So the stock's up uh, almost 400%, uh, you know, in a year and a half. So. We understand Shopify is one of those tech stocks that, you know, really been embraced uh, right now. But, you know, it's going to lose it eventually. They all do. They all do. You know, we, we get all hyped up about technology. You know, I'll be there at the top waiting. <laughs> I'll be there at the top waiting. Oh, and uh, Stock God, I know you do a lot of uh, shorting now. You might want to take a look at this stock that I'm I'm looking into, which is Nano. Nano. For those of you guys who also like to short, and surprisingly enough, there are shorts available on this on Thinkorswim and many of the other platforms because this is not one of those ones that you know. Again, the volume isn't crazy every day, uh, but that enables you you know not to really get pushed out of your trade because it's not one of those ones that is going to be highly volatile every day. So you can kind of let it sit and do its thing. But Nano is going to be selling off. I, I I predict this will probably end up back in the single digits. Or end up in the single digits very soon. 
Give it some time. AUI, yeah, we talked uh, looked at AUI. TRTX. Uh no, what was that ticker you put? T R X C. T R X C. Uh here, T R X C. Another one where the opportunity was looks like it was kind of missed there on T R X C back in uh April. Looks like it was a missed opportunity there in April. Nice move now for the stock. Again, I'm on the weekly chart, so let's see what the daily looks like. Uh, yeah, May into June. Looks like that was your opportunity. Man, nice move there. A dollar now, 101, gaining over the century mark. You know, that's a very critical point for all of these stocks. TRXC. Yeah, nice looking, nice looking chart. But can it can it stay out there? Looks like a dollar has been an issue. But you know, we you you, you kind of know that's that's going to be, you know, we've talked about what one dollar means to a lot of these small cap stocks, especially ones that have been under a dollar for some time. What getting back above one is such a big deal. Yep, settlement period shortened to two days, effective tomorrow. That's a big, big difference, man. You know, T plus three has been around for a long time. So now T plus two, you know, it's all about, the, you know, they want to get to a point where it's no PDT rule because, you know, volume is down when, it, when we talk about the stock market. You know, volume is down from just a couple years ago significantly. You know, we got a lot of guys moving to crypto. We got a lot of other reasons where people aren't trading like they used to millennials aren't investing like their parents invest or their grandparents invested so they're getting thirsty for that cash they're getting thirsty for that cash so we'll we'll, we'll see pdt rule disappear here if not within the next i'd say within the next 24 months we can start seeing at least that conversation being put out there a little bit more especially as, as crypto starts to really take hold you're going to start seeing the pdt rule uh really you know get discussed that's how they're going to draw you guys back from crypto they're going to say okay well you know look the pdt rule could be going away come back to these safer waters you know quotations in front of and behind safer waters apvo APVO. Somebody said APVO for the short tomorrow. I'm not sure just yet, man. I'm not sure just yet on APVO as a short because you guys remember uh, we talked about APVO on Thursday being that they they closed up that uh, $75 million deal to sell their flagship drug. Now, here's the thing. Their market cap before that move on Friday was only $29 million. So their flag, I mean, they literally sold their best product for twice their market cap. So that's a lot of cash being put down to their bottom line. Uh, now, you know, all news, good news eventually becomes old news. So there'll be an opportunity, yes, to ride this short. Uh, but let's see whether or not investors still love it for another day. But yeah, you do have a catalyst for a possible short situation in the stock. Uh, as you can see here, the company wasn't doing so well to begin with. Uh, APVO very well could look like a short opportunity. All right. Paper trade it if you can't do it otherwise. Uh, Eric, don't know anything about this stock. Erickson. Nasdaq Eric uh, last time you know I haven't seen an Ericsson phone Dude, I don't know do they even still make phones I don't even think they even still in the hardware business at all I don't remember I don't think they're even still in the hardware business at all two days for settlement rather than three well two days I mean yeah, I mean, two days is not one, though. I mean, you know, the 
T plus one gives you the opportunity to trade every, you know, nonstop. You know what I'm saying? That gives you the opportunity, you know, same day settlements that you can just go on and on and on like you stock trade is doing right now. You stock trade is if you got an Android or Apple phone and you sign up to an account to you stock trade, you can trade as much as you want for one dollar. You know, buy and sell. So. Eric, APVO, CERS. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, get through some of these last tickers before we get out of here. Again, shout out to all my callers who gave some pretty good plays. Uh, we'll go over, again, some oil stocks for this week. Uh, do we have any people in here from Florida area? Are you guys going to be leaving? What are you guys' plans? I'm curious as to know what you guys' plans are. I'd hate to have to know, you know, be worried about any of you guys down there in Florida area uh, that you're not going to be sticking around for this hurricane this coming weekend. I hope you're getting your water right now, packing up your trucks now, man, getting the, you know, getting your blankets, the sleeping beds, the water, everything you need. You need to be getting that right now. All right. Fuck that last minute shit. Mr. JRH, T plus zero. Yeah, T plus zero. You stock trade. That's correct. K-E-M-T. Court. Court. Looking like a buy and hold. All right. I don't know what's going on with court, but very much looking like a buy and hold. Definitely a buy and hold stock, Larry. It looks like that's a beautiful looking chart, man. I don't know what what uh, they got going on here, uh, but it looks like they might have some great drugs that people are, are mining. Some great drugs here. W one second, guys. One second, guys. Hold on. Yeah, some real great. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, you stock trade good? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I have. I've never. I have usually never left, but I got her here for the weekend, so she just wanted to see what was up. Yeah. Water, bread, and propane already gone. Damn. But, yeah, man, you know, getting back, I lost track. That's why I hate being disturbed while I'm doing this shit. Uh, but, yeah, you guys in Florida, uh, please, 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 please get your shit together now, man. I, 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 you know, I just hate to hear that you guys are in some bad situation, man. You know? All right, so let's go ahead and, and go through some tickers that we already talked about that are going to be hot for this week. Uh, not much to go on because, you know, everybody's just anxious about Monday. I know I am. I'm anxious about Monday because uh, I want to see whether or not some of these oil companies are going to continue running or not. All right, so we talked WLL. We talked WLL. Uh, nice opportunity, 458 oil company, incredible volume. Last couple days have been really, really good for the stock. 12 cents here, 10 cents here, 13 cents here. Very safe looking play over the last week. We'll see whether or not that continues on. Uh, oil and gas exploration company. I see a lot of people putting out their tickers out there too. So definitely copy and paste. Copy those to your little uh, notepad. 
and look over those as well. Look over those as well. Uh, BW, I saw Desert Edge shout me out on BW. Uh, I'm still a fan of BW until we hit my 294 exit. Somebody talked to me after hours or probably already there. I don't know. But I loved BW last week. I, I, you know, I recommended that you guys really take a look at BW. You're up already uh, nicely with this 20% gain uh, on that stock on Friday. I think we find more support on Monday, more buyers to pad our gains, and we get that 294, and we can get out the trade. Okay, uh, you can stick around if you want. I mean, but I, I'm I'm getting out at 294. Uh, HTGM, HTGM, uh, very low float. As African Emporium did say, this is a very low float. The stock has ran before. It's done some crazy, crazy things in the past. Uh, it, you know, got into oversold territory on Thursday. Huge move on Friday. I don't know if it's going to continue or not. Uh, could be just kind of one of those sporadic things because it doesn't necessarily hold gains very, very well. But one I would still watch because that that Friday volume was insane, as you can see. Uh, but as you can see, very, very risky play because it does leave a lot of people up there. Uh, RTNB had news on Friday. Uh, you know, stock got, uh, I was not stock got, Africa Emporium loves it. Uh, he mentioned, you know, how critically important of a, of a company it is. How, you know, in comparison to its competitors it could be seen as um you know almost oversold or or just really neglected and it could be an opportunity where somebody can come up and snatch this up uh i i think you know if you're willing to be a little bit patient you know i think it could possibly work in your area are you going to see three dollars again maybe maybe not maybe maybe not i think that 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 opportunity has came and gone uh, so just just be careful on that one. RTNB is that ticker. RTNB is that ticker. Uh, HOS, former OTC stock, uh, former OTC stock. You know that that two ninety three, that two ninety three. It, it, it's going to break it on Monday. Now here's on Tuesday. Excuse me. Uh, you know it, 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 here. This is the stock that we had. What's his name? Bull Trader from Bull Tra Bull Trade Finder dot com. Or something like that. I forgot him. We, we had him on the show. And he talked about HOS. This used to be an OTC stock. They came on. I think personally they're scam. But the stock runs. And, you know the stock does run. I, I, I'll give it to him. The stock does run. Uh, so again if, if oil still is looking like it is it is right now. Uh, this is going to go higher. And then you're going to see threes. Mid threes is a very possible thing this is a stock that has ran before the company's been looking for oil for like 10 years they've never found it i don't think they ever will as i've said several times here on this show but uh it's a huge catalyst right now uh the cues uh the cues right now here's the thing on the cues i think the last last uh you know three days uh, last uh, middle three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of last week, you know, I think you had the robos step in and really take things out of line on the queues. Right now, I'm looking at, you know, the indices and the futures are really selling off, especially the NASDAQ futures. They're down 17 points now. So I think we're going to have a, an interesting down day on the queues. You're going to see gold rally. You're going to see a lot of gold plays run tomorrow because gold is up right now $12. We just hit $12 right now in gold. Gold up $12. So AUI, uh, you know, GSS, BAA, all those have to be on your watch list tomorrow. Uh, but, yes, I, I think you're going to have a down day tomorrow on the queues. Uh, if in fact you might see the stock, I'm pr putting back up the Keltner channels here. Uh, what is that? 144.95. Yeah, why not? 144.95. The top of the Keltner channels. If you don't know how Keltner channels work, basically, if you go on the outside of the channel, the idea is that it, the stock or whatever the instrument that you're following will follow will, will be forced back into the channel. Will be forced back into the channel. 
uh, you know, does it work? You know, again, you know, do your research on it. You know, it's, it, no, no indicators, 100% accurate. But for the most part, they, you know, it does a good job. Uh, but you can get burned, as you can see on some of these, because some stocks do go outside the channel and stay outside for some time before coming in. But do your research on that indicator. But, yeah, I can very well see the Q come back in uh, to the 144s. Obviously, my ch my uh, chart was busted with that move on Wednesday outside of my uh, my entry. Yeah, BAA, GSS, I like all of those. All of those gold plays, especially BAA, though. BAA is nice little low float gold play after that reverse split a couple months ago. Let me see here. Yeah, with gold up 12 bucks, I mean, come on. It's going to be a huge run on gold tomorrow. I think you think your J Nug, J Nug is going to be on fire. You know, again, it, 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 these got to hold overnight, right? I mean, because we, we understand how sometimes these things can cool off overnight. But to see Asia reacting the way they are right now to gold, uh, this is really interesting. But, you know, North Korea is acting crazy right now. North Korea is acting crazy right now. Matter of fact, let me go and take a look at what other. All right. L-O-D-E. Nope. Won't look at it. EGI. I don't know why they consider this a gold play, but it is a gold play. Um, what else? AAU. AAU. Not bad. But yeah, MUX. Here's another one. MUX could possibly be uh, a gold play as well. MUX. MUX looking like it's trying to break above those those the 267 level get back to winning again. AKG, let me look at that one. Okay, I like AKG. I actually like AKG. Looking for one with some decent volume and besides BAA, I, I thank you for that AKG called uh Desert Edge. I actually like that one a lot. Let's look at IAG. IAG 671. Damn, I think you're extended on this one, but you could probably, again, the catalyst is more than enough to keep you hot here on IAG. But, but again, the AKG looks better than IAG. Yeah, I'd probably go AKG. One, it's cheaper. You get more bang. I think you got a lot more in AKG than you do in IAG tomorrow. Thank you. You got way more upside in AKG tomorrow. All right, because you, you, I mean, you're 55. The other one we just pulled up, we were at already at 72. You know, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just, just saying, you know, what's the better upside? I like where this stock is at on the chart. Vista Gold under a dollar again. I don't. VGZ. Ah. Yeah, again, this one too. Volume just isn't there. But the volume in AKG is there. Volume is there. Love it where it's at on the chart. All right, so wrap the show up here in just a minute. I'll be back tomorrow to see where... You know, our analysis got us today. CERS, medical devices, medical devices, serious. Okay, looks like you're trying to you're trying to break out of some some levels here, some resistance at that uh, just above you there, the two sixties. So let's see if you can if you can get there, man. It's been you've been struggling with those two sixties. Been really struggling with those two sixties. Let's see if you can do it. Eight four five, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, it's Ken from New York. How's it going? Hey, Ken, what's up, man? How are you? Um, just want to get your opinion on the LQMT. I have a position in that one. Uh, it, it, uh, 
hit a high close to 40 around 12:30 on Friday, and then it came off the high. Yeah, I saw. You know, it looks like Twitter is getting really excited about LQMT too. Uh, you know, when these OTC start to run, they start developing fan clubs. Uh, so, you know, this one, you know, it's already kind of hot, but man, I mean, LQMT right now, uh, definitely acting like it's under some kind of promotion right now because this volume that's been coming in over the last three days is very unusual for it. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking. You're right. Um, they're also having some kind of investors day at their new facility in California on October 17th. That's way out there, but, uh, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, okay. And you also have that Apple, but I don't know. I know every day, Apple has their September twelfth is the iPhone launch, so maybe that has something to do do with the uh, do with the stock as well. I don't know. Yeah, it could very well have something to do with it. Uh, yeah, just just you got a lot of people in it now, man. Nine million shares uh, traded yes on Friday. Uh, Your size kind of high. Yeah, average is only two million, so very very <laughs> impressive day. Uh, last Friday for LQMT, but again, you know, you had a lot of people left up there uh, right. on, on that chart. So I, I just be a little bit careful with that, man. I mean, right. that sell off towards the uh, the afternoon like that. Now you got a ceiling up there that you've got to work higher. Uh, right. I actually, the stock has to hold the thirty six tomorrow yep. at the open. If if you fail that, then I, I don't know if you're going to be able to come back up. So I right. I would look to see if you fail 36, 34 is your support. If you fail 34, I think I wouldn't even touch it then. Right. Yeah, but exactly. um, it's got to hold the open. You know, it's just got to hold the open. And if it does come back, uh, it's got to hold 36. But, you know, I, I, I think that's your only hope on that one. Um, and one other thing um, I meant, I tweeted to you earlier today regarding uh, defense stocks, um, defense stocks, and I think um, one of the uh, defense companies is being is being bought out. Uh, to, there was some tweet. One of the big companies is being bought out. That bought out, um, and with everything with North Korea, those could be great stocks to play a few calls in. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's that's the only thing I hate about war is just the fact that yeah, defense stocks and. You know, I remember, you know, even learning about this uh, way back when and during the Iraq war and how you know, yes. some of the best years that, that some of these defense companies had was during the Iraq war. If you go back and I look at I remember their, boots and coots. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you look at their charts, I mean, this it's insane. At the beginning, 2001, 2002, they had some of their best years. Uh, yes. But, yeah, there some of these companies would, that's the, the main thing they would want is to have a war with North Korea. Um, but yeah. you know, uh, it's something I, I honestly don't want to see, and uh, no, I, that's kind of one of the reasons why I kind of hate defense uh, stocks because they make money on death. Uh, right. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but I don't see that article. If one got bought out, I'm looking for. I wish I. Yeah, I wish I saw a tweet and one of the. Uh, I'll, 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 I just don't remember which one. Martin Marriott. I, I forget. I, I'm not sure. No, that's fine. Yeah, if you figure it out, I'll be on live again yeah. tomorrow. So okay. we'll see. We'll talk about it then. Cool. Enjoy your day. All right. Take care. Appreciate it, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out, Ken, for the call. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Ken is on it, man. Ken is Ken. Ken stays on those gains, man. I see Ken on Twitter. He is. He's following these penny plays, and he's all on top of the gains, man. Shout out to Ken from New York. Said Bitcoin's lost a thousand dollars in value. Yeah, that's why I tweeted out that you know Bitcoin right now is the opportunity, but I can't find support. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking for support in Bitcoin. I'm, you know, every time I'm, I'm thinking I want to pull the trigger. You know, it's getting tested, man. I wanted to pull at sixty-seven. I wanted to pull. Uh, what was that? 67. What was that? That was 67 on. What was that? I thought Friday it hit. Six, yeah, I think Friday. Yeah, on Friday, I thought I wanted to buy on Friday. When we're here, where I thought was bottoming out. All right. Had a dip buy, but then came right back down. I, I don't know. I don't know anymore about Litecoin. I still want a piece of it. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm, I want a piece of these cryptos. I just want to find a solid, strong support. And I don't mind being a little bit late. I don't. I'm not trying to, you know, 
get the bottom the bottom. I just love to see, you know, some some higher lows. We're not seeing the higher lows that assure you of the stock going or excuse me, the, the price going higher and that you're not buying at, you know, the wrong price. I don't mind buying a little bit high, but you've got to be seeing those higher lows. Uh, how do you buy uh, Litecoin? Coinbase.com. Coinbase.com. They sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as Litecoin. Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as Litecoin. There's some other cryptos out there. Shout out to the uh, brother who called up and gave me that website with the other cryptocurrencies. Uh, but I got to find out how to buy them. There's some cryptocurrencies out there that, you know, that have like, you know, four cents a share, five cents. I mean, uh, let me give out that that ticker he gave me or that website he gave me to follow the crypto market caps cryptocurrency market caps and here here's here it is right here let me put it in the chat room so you guys can have it coinmarketcap.com that's the website right there uh, but again you're going to have to kind of do some research on where to be able to get you know these cryptos at but they're still some cryptocurrencies out there do your research on them some of them are just pump coins some of them are legitimate opportunities to possibly be one day in a conversation with bitcoin and ethereum and all those other ones uh but you got to read up on some of these man because some of them are just you know like pot coin and all that crap i mean it's just crap you know i think like burger king has a has one somebody named a burger king or some crap like that Uh, one coin called mobile gold that's going for like 57 cents a share right now uh, so I think I see I think crypto right now is you know there's so the discounts you know we've been looking for an end the end is now I mean you know this is your opportunity this is your opportunity once that China situation gets straightened out you're, you're gonna wish you had bought now because now some of these stocks are, I mean, some of these cryptos, you see, I'm all confused. Some of these cryptos are going for prices I think they'll never see again once that Chinese situation is settled. You'll never see these prices again in crypto. Once that Chinese situation is, is all done, you'll never see these prices again. You know. All right, IDXG, uh, IDXG, look at the one minute, IDXG, all right, yeah, I do see the flag pattern on IDXG, we'll see what happens to it, Bitrix is better than Polo Neex, all right, so we got Bovash in there giving you guys opportunities where to where to buy Bitcoin. I've already signed up with Coinbase, but Bitrex and Polo Neex is one is, I guess two other ones. But I, I use Coinbase because it's just so simple and I'm seeing so many other people use it. And it is very simple. I mean they you know, you can see the prices, they're live, it's you know, they make it so simple. But use that website I just gave you guys to stay on the breast of uh, these cryptocurrencies. And uh, they seem to ripple. Ripple, is a, ripple right now going for 19 cents is one that I, I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about too, Ripple. You know, that one's going at a discount here too. They're all down. Pretty much all of them are down. There's a couple of them that are seeing are hanging in there but for the most part all of them are slashed I see one H share down 68 percent over the last 24 hours down 68 percent over the last 24 hours so huge huge discounts available out there right now all right 
So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll be back, you know, tomorrow, same time, same place, uh, and confirm, you know, what what's really going on out here. Uh, I know most of you guys, if you've been to the gas station, you're paying way more. Uh, you paid way more this weekend than you paid last weekend in gas. Ten cents, twenty cents, forty cents in certain places. Uh, next week. You could be paying even higher than what you paid this weekend. So uh, we know that we live in a capitalist society and they're going to take advantage of the opportunity to shut down production, eliminate supply that's been floating out there now for nine months, 12 months, choking up the prices of oil. So these companies are going to take advantage of that. They're going to have an excuse to shut down production. They don't have it when you don't have a weather situation or hurricane, you know, or whatever. They don't have the reason to shut down production. Now they have the reason they're going to do it. They're going to do it. All right. They understand that higher gas prices benefit their businesses. So what we as traders can do that, yeah, on the flip side, we're going to be paying more for, you know, crude. Let's put our money where, you know, the opportunity lies for us to be able to make some money uh, with the oil companies, with the oil companies. So very 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 much be following oil gold right now going insane right now gold going insane uh the puts for you option players you know you already know looks like technology is going to sell off tomorrow so there's some tech stocks that have been doing really really well uh, that are going to sell off tomorrow based on what we're seeing so far again we'll see how the night uh follows through but uh, that's what it looks like it's going to be tomorrow. All right. Press like if you can. What's going on, Joshua? Press like if you can. You Somebody say bike to work. Man. I haven't taken a bus in a long time. You know, I was, uh, when was the last time somebody in here took a bus? I, I'd love to take a bus somewhere. It's been a minute since I've taken a bus. I like to hop on the bus, but I just don't be having the patience sometimes because, you know, you read the bus, you know, because they'll have like apps now. They got the apps now, you know, and the bus will say like 730, you know, especially when I was living in New York, you'll say the bus was like 745 and the bus won't come until like 815, 830. And you just sitting at the bus like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where's this motherfucking bus? You know? And then when the bus driver pulls up, he got an attitude or she got an attitude. And all you want to do is slap the shit out of them. But, you know, most of them, are, it's, it's a state crime if you, you know, assault a, poli uh, a bus driver in most states. Like, you know, if you assault a bus driver, it's like a huge, huge deal. It's like a felony. You know. It's not like simple battery. Like if you just beat up some random person. Uh, he said, you ride the train. Yeah, the, well, but Atlanta is legit. Like, Atlanta got a, a real beautiful transportation system, you know. It's just that people be acting crazy on that thing, you know, especially when you're starting to go through College Park, you know, when you start going from the airport, because I'll get off at the airport and you go all the way down like College Park. Oh, my God. You know, you just feel like you need your gun on you sometimes because some dudes be acting crazy on that bus on that little thing because i i got a sister all the way in duluth so i'll take the you know all the way to duluth all right you said fuck buses fuck metro fuck public transportation okay <laughs> this guy said fuck public transportation he's in the desert You say you're not trying to ride. Yeah, that after school, Atlanta transportation after school is, is hell no. All right, let me get up out of here, folks. Thank you so much. It's been a great show. Uh, I'll be back same time, same place. Shout out to all the people who watch this. Uh, I, I, I Again, I'm so appreciative of everybody who watches this show and loves to trade penny stocks, man. Love, 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 love it. All right, be back same time tomorrow. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see. I got an outro. Because, you know, they've been so picky on the music lately. Shit. 
Don't let a brother have anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. JRH. Mem2C. Andres. Oh boy, Peach. Mr. Sinclair. Thank you. Legendary 8. Who else was in here? Cool Cats. Uh, shout out to all the people who watched my show today. All the people who called into the show today. Tomorrow's going to be an exciting day, man. This week is going to be exciting. There's going to be an opportunity to be made some good money this week. There's going to be some great opportunity for you this week. Hell, there is, I'm especially that Thursday, Friday going into that hurricane weekend. That Thursday, Friday going into that hurricane weekend, there's going to be some money to be made. There's going to be some money to be made, you know. So be very well, be very aware of that. CHK, yeah, I'm all over CHK. WLL, BW, uh, what else? HTGM, uh, Ears is one we looked at. There are, there are quite a few of them, quite a few of them out there. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.